What up everyone, it's Kirtan Singh and I'm back with a brand new video. So today I am reviewing the second episode of The Mandalorian. Yes, two episodes are already out and well that's pretty impressive to be honest but the thing is these don't feel like proper episodes okay they're really short and I don't know how I feel about that I really uh, you know I do know how I feel about that actually I don't like it the first episode was fine in 38 minutes or so I believe it was and I can deal with that that wasn't bad but this second episode was just 30 minutes I believe maybe even less and it really felt like it. It was one way where it was like that, oh, it's over now? And it's not in the sense where, wow, that was so fun and exciting, it's already over. It was just like, that's really all I'm gonna get. And for a show which only has eight episodes, this is probably the biggest problem I have with it. This felt like a filler episode and a waste of time, to be honest. Now, I know there are people out there who are gonna say, wait, but then this happened and this happened. And there are also people who are gonna support me in what I believe, but to be honest, there are a few reasons why this is objectively considered a filler episode and of not no great importance so far. Obviously we're going to watch the whole season and then we'll look back and be like, ah, oh, this makes sense and this is better because of this and whatnot. But judging on the first two episodes alone, this episode really just doesn't feel like it had to happen. So in this episode, what happens is that the Mandalorian takes Baby Yoda, aka the child, to the ship of his um, and he encounters Trandoshan um, bounty hunters along the way and Jawas who raid his ship and he goes um, through a whole um, mini mission I'd say a side quest because it really feels like a side quest as he tries to get his ship repaired so he can go back to deliver the child. Now this on its own is not a bad idea, having this little side quest to show more of the world and show more for the Mandalorian and what he has to do as a bounty hunter. It's all good because bounty hunters aren't always just cool bad guys, badass guys, sorry I should say, because Mandalorian's not really a bad guy. These show the real life struggles of a bounty hunter. It's not all like guns and flamethrowers and like getting all the money and credits and whatnot, because there's also moments where you're really struggling because the Mandalorian, he's coming back from the fight with he had with um, teaming up with IG-11 and then he gets um, tackled by some Trandoshans. He's walking all the way while doing this and then he has to chase after the Jawas and then he has to fight the monster. So he's doing a lot in a, quite a short amount of um, time which is why I'm fine with him not being such a badass in this episode. He really gets beaten a lot and Sometimes it's a little much, um, but otherwise I can understand why he is like that in this episode. With this episode as well, I really started to notice the music a little bit more. It's nothing spectacular, but I really do enjoy certain moments of it, especially when I look back and just listen to the soundtrack on its own. I do love the Mandalorian um, track from the actual first episode itself. Episode also has some pretty stunning visuals, but at the same time, while Baby Yoda is so amazing and cute to look at and it's so well done, there are actually some shots which I'm like, ah, uh, really? This is an episode that had 15 million dollars go into it? Because there's a moment where there's a montage of them building the ship back together and it looks so bad. I get why you would do it at night because you want to make it as dark as possible, you know, limit the lighting as much so that we can spend as little money as you can on it. But at the same time, putting that aside, the actual editing of the montage was really bad in my opinion and I really didn't like it. But moving back to the plot itself, the Jawa scene and everything that goes around there is really just doesn't make too much sense to me. It doesn't feel necessary because from a character perspective, um, nothing happens to the Mandalorian. People say we find out that he is very honorable because he actually offers Nick Nolte's character a job. Uh, but at the same time, we already knew that he was kind of honorable in that sense because he saved the child from IG-11 instead of killing the child because he could have let the child die, it doesn't matter to him. He would get a few, some less credits, yeah sure, but we already know from the fact that he's accepted half the amount of pay from the first episode already in that first scene so to him you know clearly he'll change the payment if necessary um or even if just cause really 
And so clearly the payment isn't the top priority for him. But what happens is that we see him as an honorable man in the first episode, and then we see him as an honorable man in the second episode, but we don't get anything new. To the characters, they find out that Baby Yoda is force sensitive, but from an audience perspective, I kind of already knew that. My whole family had the assumption that it would be a force sensitive child, that's why it was important. So having that realization and making that really the only thing that comes out of this episode is really bad to say the least. There's nothing new that comes from this episode apart from the fact that it uses the force. And from audience, I already knew that was going to happen. So I got nothing out of this episode. There was no new character development. There was no new plot twists or anything that really furthers the plot anymore. Because him being force sensitive, it's, the Mandalorian doesn't even really recognize the Force, neither does Nick Nolte's character. So from a character perspective, they don't have any connection with the Force, and the Baby Yoda using the Force really does nothing. Yeah, it saves the Mandalorian at one point, which was so annoying because the Mandalorian just stood there with a knife out. I get he's tired. I said before, I understand why he's tired and why he's not his, at his best. But really? Like, you're just gonna stand there with a small knife? And then even after Baby Yoda uses the Force, he just kills it with one stab with this tiny knife. And I'm just like, what? Looking beyond that, the Jawas were a nice addition. There's a lot of callbacks to the original trilogy and other movies and other comics and whatnot. And I'm sure fans will love that. Die-hard fans might find it a bit too much, but some might also really love that. And I don't have a problem with it. I think it's fine. Um, there is a little bit too much of it. Um, I have no problem with Jawas being there because I know they're already on other planets and whatnot. And I like the idea that the Mandalorian couldn't really climb the fortress itself of the... Um, the sand dune um, crawler. But the thing I don't like and I don't get is why the Jawas had such a hard time of getting the Mandalorian off. Because they make it a point, the filmmakers make it obvious to us that even the weapons of the Mandalorian were taken by the Jawas, yet for some reason the Jawas think of the best way to get rid of the Mandalorian off their fortress is to throw things at him and just try to stop him from climbing up by hitting the wire stuff instead of using one of his weapons to just shoot him. Because they clearly shouldn't care whether he lives or die or not because he killed, he disintegrated several of the Jawas which, look, some people might have a problem with him just straight out doing that because it's not really a practical thing to do. To be honest, I don't really care because, you know, it was cool to see. So I'm going to give that to them because it was an interesting thing to see um, and he ended up chasing after them anyway. If it was where he just shot them and he didn't bother chasing after them, then I would be questioning what was his plan the whole time. So I guess he was trying to scare them off so they wouldn't take any more and then come and, you know, chase after them. Not the most practical thing, but hey, what are you going to do? Um, yeah, he's got armor on, but I really don't know how powerful this armor is. I get how he can like soften blows and like block blasters, but he falls from such a great height as well later on and he's so fine. He gets thrown everywhere by a beast, the mud horn, and it's, he's fine. And it's a bit much for me. I also think it's very... Um, out of place when he's falling, when they hit down the rope that he's climbing on and he falls, but then the next thing you know, he's right at the top and he's like reaching forward and climbs on top. And I'm like, we just saw you fall. It's one of those things in movies where they just show you one thing and then they just flip on it and just have it do another thing for a quick reveal and a quick like, whoa, look at that. Um, and it really sucks in that aspect. Two other things I want to quickly touch on before I end this review, because this is going on for quite a while, but I love how the Mandalorian says that the weapons are a part of his religion. My dad mentioned that's a quick, cool relationship with my religion as well, and that, because um, we have city signs and whatnot. Um, but anyway, with that, that was really cool. And it's also interesting how he's willing to let the Yoda child live, but then so helplessly, um, so willingly lets the Jawas eat the egg of a mud horn and another creature and it's just interesting why he doesn't even show any reactions to them eating it if he gives it to them he's like they're gonna so they're gonna raise it you know to be one of their own or something and he talks to Nick Nolte's character or something and then Nick Nolte's like no they're gonna eat it or something and then he has a reaction that way we can at least see that you know there's more of that moral compass that everyone says he has because he asks Nick Nolte to join his crew and whatnot. But that would have been made more sense based on what I saw from the first episode. But that's quite small in comparison to the episode as a whole. So overall, this episode was far more disappointing than the first. I thought the first episode was exactly what I expected. But this episode was 
far more boring, it was too slow, and everyone says, oh, 10 minutes of no dialogue at the start. But what did you get out of the 10 minutes? Um, was it cool to see? Yeah, but was there any character development? Not really. So, yeah, you win some and you lose some in that aspect. The episode was slow and the episode was very short, which I really hope they get longer, close to an hour, because um, I'm just really wondering where this show is going to go and how good the quality of it will be as a whole season. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and let me know what you thought about this episode in the comment section down below. And until next time, I'll see us.